Vintage instrument appraiser Mike Reeder and the Collectibles crew caught up with his longtime friend, blues artist Joe Bonamassa, on a tour stop in Lexington. These two self-described guitar nerds look at a few pieces from Joe's massive collection and talk a little guitar history. Check it out. Joe, thanks for having us out today. Mike, thanks, thanks for doing it. I'm, uh, I'm, um, we, we go back like 25 years. When yeah. My, my dad used to set up, to, set up next to your booth at the Philly show, and we've yeah. known each other for a long time. This is uh, awesome to be here with all your great stuff and uh, look at some of your collection and yeah. very small, tiny bit of your collection. You know, it, it grows as, it, as, as, the, as the guitars kind of multiply on the road. You know, I used to, I mean, I still do, but I used to take four trunks empty and I stick them in the truck. And usually by the second or third week, it's all full up with guitars and amps and stuff I'd buy. It seems now that, that the brick and mortar retail store is, is pretty much on its way out or out altogether because a lot of the shops that I would go to two years ago are not even open. Yeah, it's gone. It's, it's, it's changed. Terrible. It's yeah. changed. You know, back when I started, I would take a van and two days come back full. Now, right. as you know, yeah. you know, you'd be lucky to find anything, you know, cool in a city. You know? Yeah, and if they're still open, um, you know, it... it, it, it the inventory doesn't turn over. They actually have the same guitars they had two years ago, and they're just doing lessons and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I, I always say, you know, as a collector, I'm a co guitar collector. Yeah. And I've been collecting since I was a kid, you know, and working for my father. And I always tell people, it's the strangest notion, is the minute you sell, the minute any collector or hobbyist sells a guitar for $1 or 25 cents over what he paid for it or she paid for it, guess what? Guess what they become? Yep. Guitar dealer. Yep. And now everybody's got a <laughs> reverb page, and now everybody's got, you know, eBay accounts. And yep. the whole idea of the unknown, hunting down the unknown, finding these hidden gems, yeah. it, it's, it's kind of taken the mystique out of it. You know, there's not a lot of under-the-bed finds anymore. You yeah. Know? So I, I want to talk about this guitar. I bought this 51 Nocaster as it stands. And the serial number of the guitar is 1755. Oh, that's cool. And, and I kind of, we do a, we do a, like a, at the end of the night when everybody's deaf and just wants to jam a little bit, <laughs> we do, we do a, a cover of how many more times from Zeppelin and it's it just the perfect. You know, and the, the telly, even yeah. though Paige was, was more synonymous with that guitar you're holding. Yeah. The, the telly kind of does that early Zeppelin. Yeah, you played cool. my 60 Burst on it last time you were in town. Exactly, Not, exactly. Yeah, that's so, cool, man. So, so yeah, and this is a no-caster. Um, clip logo. Yeah. Um, you know, Leo and I believe Fred Gretsch were competitors in business, but they were friendly enough. And Gretsch, I believe, had a, a drum kit called the, the Broadcaster, Broadcaster with yeah. a K. Yeah. And Leo had a... Uh, his new electric guitar called the Broadcaster, and they and by '51 they said, "Well, you need to change the name," and they didn't have a name for it, and they just took the word Broadcaster off the logo. They yeah, and because Leo never wasted anything, no. so he just clipped off the word off the bottom of the logo. And there's a small time period where there are actually no casters. I mean, what do you think, half a year or something? Yeah, I mean, I own yeah. a, an October '51 Telecaster. Um, I would say probably from January to maybe September. Yeah. You know, at the very latest, as soon as the logo, probably as soon as the logos ran out. Uh, friends of mine, we have really in-depth discussions about Leo, and I think he's a genius. It was a genius, and I'll tell you why. Because look at how many immaculate conceptions that he had. I mean, the Stratocaster. Yeah. It's virtually the same as it was in '54 as it is in 2016. Yeah. The Telecaster, broadcast, whatever you want to call these things. They haven't changed much at all. Right. You know, the twin amps, the tweed stuff, his amplifier, you know, uh, building was just unparalleled. You know, it took Gibson probably six or seven tries to come up with that. Yes. You know, different variations and different mm. pickups and colors and, you know, and it, it, it really to me drives home how, how just like, in, Incredibly genius, Leo was. He was an amazing engineer, and you know he, he didn't play, right. so he would have players come in and get their opinion, you know, yeah. which is awesome. Which is maybe you know who knows how that guitar came about. Well, from what I've read, this guitar here, um, I'll I'll I'll, 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 switch, I'll yeah. switch here. This is um, this is Alden Shamblin's uh, 54 June of 54 um, Gold Strat. And depending on which books you read, and, and some books will say it's the first custom color Strat ever made. I don't think so. Um, I think it's one of the first five, perhaps. 
um, because they didn't really start getting into these things until May or June of 54. And it was given to Eldon, who was the guitar player for Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys, in June of 54. That's and I got awesome. pictures of Eldon in black yeah. and white and the guitar. And, and he received this and a 115 Fender Bandmaster amplifier. And Leo was such a big Bob Wills fan, and he wanted, you know, his favorite band, or one of his favorite bands, to be playing a Fender guitar. So, you know, and Eldon was a jazz box guy up until he got this, and then played this for the rest of his life. And um, What it, a genius idea, though. The three pickups. Yeah. It's and, just, it's amazing. And, and it's like, you know, like, because a lot of, you know, a lot of people figured out over the years, you know, this, this three-way switch, you know. Front pickup, middle, you know, lead. You know, but, you know, the first time a lot of people heard this sound. I don't know what kind of sync licenses you guys have on PBS, <laughs> but it's all in good fun. Um, anyway, um, Clapton was one of the first people to wedge the switch and get mm -hmm. these two sounds. You, 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 like on Hendrix, you'd hear on like, Wind Cries Mary or, Out you know. Out of faith. You know, so a lot of it, you know, it's like, all of a sudden he had five sounds. And five usable sounds for country, jazz, rock, you know, and again, what a genius design. Yeah. And there pretty much wasn't much variance on this guitar. I mean, they've switched the woods. They yeah. went to Alder in 56. Bakelite, they changed the plastic because it broke real easy. And you can see this one here. I have a few guitars that still have the Bakelite um, covers over there. And uh, we have a real ingenious solution to fixing Bakelite. It's called white electrical tape. You just spread <laughs> it over the top. You know, but you know, he, the necks were, from what I've read, made to be disposable. You wear it out, we'll bolt another one on for you. This, you know, these, yeah. these weren't as, I hate to use a hipster term, but I will, crafted, you know, this, these were working man's tools. You yeah. know, like a Gibson was more of a crafted guitar. It was more of like, okay, so, you know, like build you a Super 400 artisan, you know, stuff. But this, this was as, as, as bare bones as it gets. And no matter what kind of style of music, you know, you get Hendrix to Eric Johnson to... Buddy to, Holly did that stroking, but, thumping yeah, thing. You know? Buddy Holly, you know, jazz guys use them, rock guys use them, yeah. country guys use them. It's like, it's like what a real, like just an unbelievable, you know, feat of engineering right off the bat. It's cool. Very, very cool. Thanks for showing us that.